These are my 10 tips for winterizing your motorcycle. Hey everybody, welcome back to Cruise Man's Garage. I'm Cruise Man, if you haven't figured that out already. And today, I'm going to give you my 10 tips on how to winterize your motorcycle so you make sure it's in perfect condition when spring riding comes around. Now, here in Texas, we can pretty much ride year-round. But in many places around the world, winter means storing your motorcycle for weeks or even months. Doesn't matter whether you ride a Goldwing, a BMW, a Harley, a Can-Am, or even a Grom. I think you're going to find this video quite helpful. Now, tip number one is to change your oil and filter. Why would you ever want to store your bike for several weeks or months with dirty, contaminated oil in the engine? Well, you wouldn't, and you shouldn't. So the first thing I recommend is that you change your engine oil and filter before storing your motorcycle. My second tip is kind of related to that, because if it's been more than 10,000 miles since you've changed your brake fluid or your clutch fluid, I recommend you do that as well. Brake fluid is hygroscopic, which means that it actually attracts moisture from the atmosphere. And if there's moisture suspended in the brake fluid during freezing conditions, well, let's just say that can't be very good for your brake components. Any moisture in brake or clutch fluid can damage sensitive master cylinder and other brake components, and trust me, those can be very expensive to replace or to repair. It's a good idea to flush and bleed your brakes and your clutch before extended cold weather storage. Now, if you're storing a liquid-cooled motorcycle, one with a radiator, your coolant should be replaced according to your manufacturer recommended specifications. Now, I ride a Honda Goldwing, and I recommend replacing the coolant in a Goldwing every 25,000 miles or two years, whichever comes first. There's a simple rule of thumb that you can always follow regarding any fluids. You will never harm your engine with fresh, clean oil or other fluids. Go ahead and top off that gas tank as full as you can get it. Once again, the enemy is moisture, and the less air space there is in your fuel tank, the less space there is for condensation to form and end up in your gasoline. Ethanol, which is found in all these modern fuels, also attracts moisture, which can be very harmful to engines. So if you can, try to fill your tank with ethanol-free fuel before storage. And if you're going to be storing your motorcycle for more than a month, I would add a good quality fuel stabilizer like Stabil. This can also help with a, you know, a little bit with the ethanol in the fuel. Now, after adding a stabilizer, make sure you run your engine for a few minutes to get that stabilized fuel circulating throughout your fuel system. Now, I'm only about halfway through my recommendations on how to winterize and store your motorcycle. If you're enjoying this video so far, why not go ahead and click that subscribe button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's completely free. And if you click that bell icon, YouTube can even notify you when I come out with new videos. I know that some of you watching this video own a Honda Goldwing. And if you do, you could easily pay a few hundred dollars to a dealer for an oil and filter change, final drive gear oil, brake fluid flush and bleed. The good news is that you can do these maintenance tasks yourself in your own garage with some simple tools. My Goldwing maintenance videos are being used by thousands of Goldwing owners worldwide to help them maintain their own motorcycles. 
Now, by doing your own oil and filter change, flush and bleed your brakes, and some of the other things we're talking about in this video, you're going to save enough just on that in dealer labor charges to more than pay for the videos. You'll be money ahead. And when spring arrives, you can fire up your bike and ride off knowing that the job was done right. Okay, let's get on with the show. You may not think it's that important to wash your motorcycle before storing it, but trust me, your paint will suffer if you allow it to sit for months at a time with contaminants sitting on that paint. Dust particles, other environmental contaminants can embed themselves in the painted surfaces and erode the clear coat over time. Therefore, it's a good idea to thoroughly wash your bike and an even better idea if you protect your paint with a good quality wax or a ceramic coating prior to storage. You could also use WD-40 on some of the other metal parts on your bike. Maintaining your battery during cold weather is extremely important. How you go about doing this might depend on just how cold it gets where you live and for how long. If your motorcycle will be stored in an environment below, let's say 25 degrees Fahrenheit for more than three weeks, I recommend that you go ahead and remove the battery and store it inside your home or in some other temperature controlled area. Regardless of whether you store the battery on the bike or indoors, you should connect it to a battery maintainer such as the battery tender from Deltran. Now there are several good brands of battery uh, maintainers on the market and I'm going to put links in the description of this video to some that I recommend and that I have on my Amazon page. If you haven't already installed an SAE connector on your battery terminals, it's very simple to do and it gives you like a little pigtail connector where you can just plug the battery tender in uh, to maintain the battery. That way you don't have to hook it up to the terminals. Of course, you should always disconnect the battery tender when you start the motorcycle. Something that a lot of people don't think about is covering the ends of your tailpipes. Believe it or not, little critters like mice can crawl up into your tailpipes looking for a warm place to build a nest. It's not unheard of. So it's a good idea to cover these when your bike is in storage. I like to use blue painter's tape. I also put a piece of the tape on my ignition switch as a visual reminder to remove the tape from the mufflers when riding season comes back around. Now you could also use Ziploc bags with rubber bands. Just don't forget to take them off before you start up the bike. Now if you have a newer motorcycle that has a smart key system, you can turn off that key during the winter months. There's no reason for you to be draining the smart key battery while your bike's being stored. Otherwise, you might go out in the garage in the spring and all of a sudden your saddlebags won't open or maybe you can't even start the bike. Now on a Goldwing smart key, you simply press and hold the logo button until you see the LED flash. That's an indicator that the key is turned off. To turn it back on, press and hold until you see the LED flash three times, an indicator that the key is now turned on. Most motorcycle seats are made from vinyl, and cold, dry air can cause vinyl to get stiff and even crack over time. So it's a good idea to condition that vinyl with a product like Lexol vinyl conditioner prior to storage. I'll put some links to vinyl conditioners in the description of this video. And kind of along the same lines as your battery, if you're storing your motorcycle for months at a time in a very cold and you know maybe dry climate, you may want to consider removing the seat and taking it indoors or into a climate controlled area.
There are varying opinions on whether you should store your motorcycle on the side stand or the center stand, but I'm kind of in the center stand camp on this one. Storing the motorcycle for a long period of time on the side stand, uh, those tires being at, at an angle, getting in that position without moving for a long time, I'm just not comfortable with that. Some people also suggest adding three to five extra pounds of air so that the tires, you know, kind of helps them retain their profile during storage. Not a bad idea. And some owners suggest that if you have any preload, suspension preload, go ahead and put those down to the lowest setting so that there's no pressure on the suspension system during storage. And there's also two schools of thought on whether or not you should cover your motorcycle during storage. Once again, I fall into the camp of storing the bike with a cover. I want to protect that paint from dust and other contaminants kind of collecting on the paint. Now, I use a bike cover from UltraGuard. Uh, that's the one I have. It's a half cover. It doesn't cover the entire motorcycle. Uh, but if you're storing your motorcycle in a garage, uh, in a relatively climate controlled condition, then a half bike cover should be fine. Now, if you're storing in a tool shed where there's no climate control or even, God forbid, outdoors, uh, you would definitely want to make sure that you have a full bike cover. And there's a couple of those from UltraGuard and Nelson Rig. They're very good quality. They're excellent products. I'll put links in the description of the video. So that's pretty much it for getting your bike ready for winter storage. Now, if you have any ideas on some things that you do that I left out, please put those down in the comments of this video and share it with our other viewers. Much appreciated. You know, I did a video like this a couple of years ago, but I got so many good ideas from you, I decided to redo the video. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please take a second to click that like button. That really makes a huge difference in getting our ratings up with YouTube, and it'll make this video available to more people. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you on the next Cruise Man's Garage.